somehow this heater is managing to keep the house toasty, even though it literally turns on and off about every three minutes. That's gotta change. That. It looks to me like that is the temperature probe that this heater is using to determine the room temperature. So my hunch is that if we just relocate this down to like say head height and not put it basically right behind where the heater draws the warm air from up here, uh, we may get a better, more even heat instead of having this thing literally turn on and off every two minutes. Well, I don't know if that was the right way to do that, but I'm gonna try it. I don't have any crimp connectors that were that small. And yeah, I don't even know how these thermal couples work. I don't know what the science is behind them. Not really worried about it. I'm trying to get heat. So let's see if we can get the other end connected and see if it'll make heat. All right, so the heater thinks it's 68 in here. This says 67. That's pretty dang close. We'll know in a few seconds whether this is gonna work or not. So first of all, this thing has a computer built into it. It's in the manual that uh, will tell you if the thermocouple is short-circuited or it's an open circuit. And the fact that it turned on means we've tricked it. It thinks Oh, it's going up. It, it thinks the thermocouple is still working, which is good, right? That's progress. I didn't know if because of voltage or something like that that you can extend this circuit out or if maybe it you know, has some negative effect on its, on its ability to work. But this thing was literally shutting off every three minutes. Oh, it's climbing to 72. So maybe we didn't put the thermocouple far enough away. Well, we'll find out. Uh oh, we got bad news. I don't think it's working. So the thermostat up there is already showing 75, but right here, we're only showing 67. I guess there's always that chance that I misunderstood the manual and that's not the thermal couple. Although it sure looks like one to me. 77, no, don't do it. 79, it's garbage. Well guys, it already shut off. What kind of heater has the thermostat in a place where it literally comes on and off every two seconds. So see the heater turned off and now it's reading 77, 76. Watch this. And it's back on, yeah, dumb. So dumb, what the heck, heater? You're stupid. Remove fan grill, retaining screws, locate temp sensor on the housing below the fan motor bracket. That's exactly what we did. Well. That's definitely the sensor right there. I wonder what this sensor is up here. There's one kind of hiding up in the upper corner there. And I know there's one kind of hiding down by the heater and that might be an over temp sensor, uh, more like a protection. Well, it shows ambient temperature sensor and then heating 
temperature, heating temperature element sensor, heating element temperature sensor, something like that. We know where those are. These are these two here, but it's not obvious which one's which. It kind of looks like that the inside one, which is the black one here, is the one that we should have done surgery to. But why would the heating temperature element sensor, why would that be below the fan bracket? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, I guess I'm gonna do some exploring and see if that other sensor might give us what we want and kind of make a deduction about whether, in fact, the sensor that we pulled off there is not the sensor that we think it is. I don't know, makes no sense. I guess I'll work at this for a while and I'll check back with you guys. Um, hmm. What do I tell you guys? So here's the thing. I just had this weird suspicion, remember, that that black sensor was the one that controls the temperature on the heater? Well, I kind of scratched my head for a minute and I thought, what if, I don't know, what if the sensors are backwards? So I'm not sold on this and I'm not, and I'm not saying I know exactly what I'm doing. Obviously I don't. But for some reason, when I move the white sensor, which the manual says is the ambient room temperature, it, it didn't change, right? It just, it just kept turning off. But look, the heater is still on. And so all I did, ah, kind of waiting here to make sure nothing blows up, right? Is I switched the two sensors. I thought about cutting the wires, moving the sensor, and doing all this stuff. But I realized that what if I just move the two, the black and the white there, so I just moved the black and the white over. I know, ballsy. I'm, I'm just testing stuff here, trying to figure this darn heater out. And now it appears that the heater is getting the, the reading that we want it to get. It's checking the actual room temperature instead of the, the temperature at the, the stinking elements. So here's how I know that it's getting the right reading. Check this out. Okay, you guys watch the temperature right there, okay? I'm gonna go blow hot air on the sensor that I moved over here, okay? So right now, this is saying 66 degrees, and so is the heater, right? But watch this. I'm just gonna blow on this a little bit and watch the heater. 66. So that it jumped up to 70, and it's gonna cool back down. So let's try it again. All right, we got to 72 that time, and now it's slowly cooling back down to 68. That tells me that this is a thermal couple, and that's the one that it's reading now. I'm kind of coming to the conclusion that we're, we've got it, we're getting it right, because the heater's still on. It's been on for three, four minutes now. I guess what we should do is turn the thermostat down to the room temperature and just make sure that it turns off, right? That makes a lot of sense. Let's go to like 64. Cool, so that shut it off immediately. That's encouraging. And let's let it go through the cool down cycle and then we'll try turning this back up and see what happens. All right, the heater thinks it's 66 in here. And I have a hunch it's not 66 up there. So let's see what the wall thermostat says. Hot diggity dog, it agrees. Wait, it thinks it's 67, ha ha. So now let's turn this up and see if it kicks back on. Let's go to 70. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, here's the deal. I'm not sold. So what we're gonna do is let's let this thing run for a little while and I'll check back in because that black sensor does something. But I, the wiring diagram makes no sense. It's a heating element temperature sensor. So maybe it's an overheat sensor. So it's a safety disconnect. Um, hmm. I guess we could unplug it to test it, but here's a good test. Let's just let the heater run and let's see if it can get it to 70 in here and, or if it just starts kicking off again every two minutes. And if everything's working good, I feel okay leaving it, but I'm not gonna take my eye off of it just yet. Well, it seems to be working fine, guys. Uh, it's definitely getting warmer in the garage, not a ton, but understandable. This little heater can't catch up that quick. Uh, I think what we'll do is put it back together, put all the covers back on, and get all that stuff done, 
and then just let it run. Um, we're gonna be working in here all afternoon on other projects, so it'll be a good chance for me just to keep an eye on the heater. I know someone out there is wondering, why the heck are you even dealing with this heater? I thought you guys had radiant in the slab. We do have radiant in the slab. That is not a simple system for us to put together right now. Uh, so I'm not, I, I don't like the pressure of having to hammer that system out. I wanna really sit and take my time and think it through uh, before we get it operational. And that's, heat is what's keeping us from moving in here among other things, not the radiant. So if this little heater can keep the house toasty, good enough, you know, sweater uh, a bowl, that's good enough for now. And that frees me up to focus on other things. I wasn't expecting to have to fumble fart with this thermostat, but here I am. The other question I have, and I might've already shared this already, is I'm concerned that our electrical service is not big enough. Which is funny because just the other day we were off grid, but currently we have this on-demand water heater and it is a high amp draw appliance. And of course we want to add a washer dryer and for now all that stuff is going to be electric because I'm going for simple. We want to get living in this darn house and so I'm not going to go through all the rigmarole to find another way to skin a cat. I'm just going to go straight for electricity. We have it. It's in the house. We can get electrical appliances. I can run wire and bam, we're living in a house. So this heater's part of that, but I'm concerned that we don't have enough juice to run the on-demand water heater and also a uh, boiler, electric boiler to run the radiant. That said, this heater is helping me to understand that the house is in fact efficient enough that I think we can run it with very little electricity, which of course bodes well when down the road. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we'll get to install the wood boiler. So that's kind of a long story about why I'm farting around with this stupid heater. I am mildly curious if the heat increase in the garage has resulted in a heat increase up here yet. I feel like the eye joists down there do a pretty good job of trapping the heat. Um, so let's see, it doesn't feel as warm up here in the house right now. It feels definitely warmer in the garage. Yep, this agrees. This is garage, loft, house, outside. So yeah, we're definitely warmer down there first and maybe over time all these temperatures will somewhat stabilize. You'd actually expect the loft to be the hottest, right? But like I said, I think those eye joists are doing a pretty good job of trapping the heat down here in the garage and it's not working its way up. So for the rest of the day, I think the plan is to start tackling the electrical in the bathroom and in the kitchenette. So recently I kind of sat down and started chicken scratching basically our garage electrical plan. And I'm trying to think of everything, but I'm sure I've forgotten something. I won't go into detail on this, but basically I'm, I'm still working on this plan. To help kind of keep things simple, I've drawn basically a detail of just the bathroom over here. I wanted to make sure I had a fairly solid electrical plan for the garage so that in, in building the bathroom and the utility room and the kitchenette, I didn't accidentally overlook something that would be more difficult down the road. When we first arrived here, we had an opportunity to purchase a bunch of building materials from a contractor who had gotten divorced and he had to sell his house really quick. We were super excited because we had buckets and buckets and buckets of outlets and switch plates and, and boxes and everything. I'm really frustrated to find out that Idaho code or maybe national code, I don't know, now requires tamper proof outlets. So we have all these buckets full of outlets and they're no good, not for code anyway. So take that for what it's worth. We'll probably just donate them or give them to somebody else who doesn't plan on having inspections or something like that so they can do with them, do with them what they will. I also learned that anything in a bedroom has to be on an arc fault breaker. This is not a bedroom. The garage doesn't qualify for that, but bedrooms must be on an arc fault breaker. That means that the outlets in a bedroom must be on their own circuit, which is normal. You don't want to plug something into an outlet and then have the light turn off. Except for here, I think we're gonna keep it more simple in the garage, the entire bathroom, the light, the fan, and the outlets are all gonna be on one breaker. And the same with this kitchenette. But the bedrooms, we might wire those different so that the outlets are separate from the lights. Kind of a good policy that way, yep, you don't have the light go out on you when you plug something in wrong. In the garage, everything must be GFI protected. 
So we're gonna try to leverage a single GFI outlet and protect everything that's downstream from that off of that one GFI. I can't remember how to do this. We'll have to do some research to figure it out. Mom's trying to lure the bugger right in. Oh, there he is. What are you doing? Bugaboo. What are you doing? Do you like that the house is warm? Huh? Have you figured out that you can go up to the loft yet? Go up the stairs. Goodbye. Hey, take your shoes off. <coughs> Goodbye. Alyssa's attempting for like the 19th time lately to put our pantry in order. It's tough because every time we every time we move it, it gets disorganized. And then every time we do a massive canning project, like our, our pantry is now currently outgrown our shelving. What's funny, there is space in here. It's just a matter of organizing it. And I actually yeah. found like, I don't know, a lot of boxes of stuff from two years ago. So I'm trying to move that to the front. So we use it and gift yep. it first, Yep. you know? And then some other stuff that we're not really using, like moved back or that we're not ready to use yet, more importantly. We yeah. have reserves for over two years, easily. Oh, gone, yeah. This year was very productive for us. Look at all that salsa, mmm, yummy. And tomato sauce, mmm, -hmm. got some of that. Is this the salsa verde? There it is. Yeah. Gallons, guys, gallons. <laughs> I'm realizing that we're, so we're, we're using the food, but we're not, I don't think I've opened a single jar of jam yet, have you? Not a single uh, jar. Not made one. ice cream with them. That's true, we made yeah. ice cream. I think it's a great way to make ice cream later. Right, and, yeah. and to gift. And gift, yep. Yeah, the food stuff I'm trying to have like right here, because if it's out of sight, it's out of mind, and you're not yep. gonna use it or get to it, so. Yep, so we recently did some shopping to try to get the essentials for the bathroom here. We picked up a couple of different vanity lights. Alyssa says we're not sure which one's gonna go in there yet. Jesse's sure. I'm pretty sure this one's going in there. <laughs> yep, she'll come in here, it'll be installed, and if you don't like it, you can change it. We also picked up a very kind of budget type exhaust fan. Um, we did find one though that has a higher CFM at 70. I can't remember what the code is. There is a code, I think it's 50 is the minimum for a bathroom. So anyway, we found one that says that's a 70 CFM and returned the other one. The big challenge that we had, and this is a great lesson to learn now, is that there aren't too many fans that are designed for two by four depth uh, floor or ceiling joists. I guess that's probably because a lot of houses use a truss system and it's basically just attic space above the trusses. So, you know, the appliance can be kind of whatever depth it needs to be. In our case, we plan on using this for storage above us. We're gonna be putting plywood over that. So everything we put up there must fit within the two by fours with the sheetrock thickness. And again, finding one that had good CFM that fits a two by four, not so easy. To add, a substantial amount of light to the bathroom, but make it more of an even light. We picked up a small LED panel. Uh, Alyssa did some calculations. She found some sort of um, kind of calculation on the internet that told you how many lumens you want for a particular ceiling height and room size. So the combination of this vanity light and this LED light is kind of built around that. What in the world? Made it down from the loft. Oh, he did. I totally Way to heard go. him go up there. Way to go, bugger licker. Oh, he wants to lay down. Oh, oh he wants to cuddle. Did oh, you, yeah. did you uh, make oh, yeah. these treads deep enough for him to lay on? I did. Bugaboo. Yeah. What are you doing? You know what? Most cats I know actually like stairs. They like to lay on them. <laughs> I don't know why. Because they're like a perch. Yeah. Huh, it's a bugger perch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to find a comfy position to lick his arm. <laughs> this is a good sign. It must mean he's relaxing in here, huh? Yeah. He likes the stairs, Mom. He's not very good at ladders. No. Bugaboo only has forward. He has no reverse. Okay. Okay, I, I gotta go to work, okay? Okay. Goodbye. I'm not sure. It's been so long that I can't remember if I actually planned on this or it was an accident. But the, the fan, the exhaust fan, fits perfectly in this bay. It makes me think I, I thought about doing that on purpose. Anyway, so it's important that it does because we need to be able to vent that outside. So we're gonna be running the vent down through this rafter, come up into the eye joist, just like we did for the plumbing vent, and then head out 
through the sip to the outside. Another reason I'm pretty sure it's important that the fan be over here is you really want it to be close to the source of the moisture instead of putting it, say, over here kind of by the door. Um, we'd rather it draw that moisture laden air and get it out of here. So that's going to work out good. I think we're going to install the LED light lengthwise this way to provide kind of an even light to the shower and then some to the rest of the bathroom. So that's kind of the plan and I guess there's nothing left to do but start hanging boxes and drilling holes. This is a, a trick or a tip or whatever you want to call it that the electricians shared was to put a double gang box where your dryer outlet goes. The dryer outlet itself, it's drilled to fit either a single gang box, which has just a screw hole in the center here and here, or it can fit a double gang box with four screws in the corners. And he suggested to give yourself lots of room for the wire. So this will fit in there just like that. And because this wire is a little bit bigger, you know, it's easier to stuff the wire into a double gang box than try to shove it into a single. So in this corner, we'll have a stackable washer and dryer. So I want to put the dryer outlet out here where if you kind of turn the dryer, you can get to it, but not such that you know, it's clear back in the corner over here where you're just never going to get to it. I'm worried that if I put that box here, it might stick out uh, or it might actually get blocked by the upper cabinet because I have written here that we've got an 18 inch drawer base that starts right here and goes to here. So I believe that upper cabinet's actually going to be about right here and that dryer is going to have to slide in kind of right next to that upper. I'm not sold on the way we've got this 240 volt, I think this is number 10 wire run. We did that because we're trying to maximize the holes that we put in the eye joists up there. And when we ran the number eight wire for this heater, we also ran a number 10 wire through the same hole because we can do that and dropped it down. The only problem is I'm gonna have to build some sort of knee wall or something to protect that length of this wire there or put some sort of rigid conduit or something. And I don't really like that. So I'm tempted to pull this back out and try to come through the wall across here and then come down into this. And that would keep this wire from being, you know, an issue up there. This will just be a double outlet. We're going to have a 30 inch uh, base cabinet right here. And then we'll have a 30 inch upper. And this will just be four outlets for what little kitchen space we kind of have to, to cook and prep here. And then I'm gonna have a single outlet over here with a switch. And that switch will control the oversink light that's gonna go underneath the upper, the smaller upper cabinet here. And we're thinking we'll probably put under cabinet lighting under this one and under this little 18 inch upper cabinet. Ironically, this little kitchenette is not much bigger than the one in our RV. <laughs> like bit of irony, right? Uh, so what we're going to do to make it a little bit bigger is actually build like a little rolling island that'll kind of serve as like a prep area, you know, serving area, maybe even a little bit of an eating area and kind of conserve the space over here for a small hot plate and just general counter space. Do I hear the bug alarm? Are you coming in? Okay. I think he's getting broken in already, guys. Okay, I'm not done electrical, okay? And mom's gonna bring dinner out soon, okay? Let's see you found the bathtub. Yeah, are you taking a bath? There he goes. That's the one. And he's down. He's down in the tub. Mm, dinner was yummy. And we have hot water in the garage. So we can use to clean up.
Well, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to get everything done tonight that I wanted. So we're gonna focus on getting the wire pulled and then probably at some point tomorrow or in the near future, we'll have to get the boxes to finish this stuff up. for you Thank wow you. they're just rotten or what uh i'm trying to drill a one inch hole through oh, a three that's inch board gotcha it's got nails in it right it's pretty hard to do okay so hopefully might, those are good well i might drill them on the ground that's and then idea. put screws in them instead of trying to go the other way around yeah much better So what you can do is we'll get the big, huge coil of Romex okay. and we can put the coil right here and then I'll have you just pull wire from probably give us, a, you know, a couple feet extra. Right. This is for the, yep. That's a home run. Easy chaining off the one in the bathroom. Uh -huh, yep. Okay. So you'll come up and you'll go through that bottom hole okay. and just go through the bottom holes all the way across. Okay. And then you'll come down in this bay right next to the panel gotcha. and then and then what you'll do, yeah, what you'll do is probably go to the ground and then come back to the top of the panel and then you can cut it. I think I plan on putting that outlet mm -hmm. on the laundry circuit. So we'll just do a home run from here. So you can, again, have a couple feet hanging out there. You'll do a home run and I'll get you a hole and you go through those bottom holes okay. all the way back to the panel. The, the upper holes, uh, true story, I don't even know why I'm running those. But anyway, uh, they actually go over to this wall uh -huh. and we're gonna go across this wall gotcha. and then we're gonna come up into the roof and we're gonna go across to this light box right here. So yeah, just start there and we'll do a home run. Then we'll do a home run from that outlet box back and then we'll see where you're at. Last pull for the night. Yeah, I think this will this will do for tonight. Good start. Yeah, this I didn't think we'd start. get this far. Super good news, guys. This heater thing we were working on earlier, it's working perfect. This thing's been coming on and turning off on cue and staying on for maybe about 20 minutes and then turning off for about 20 minutes. So I would say in two hours, it's coming on four times and turning off twice. We've had no problem maintaining 66 degrees inside. I think Alyssa told me it's 46 outside. That's what the thermostat says. Perfect, so that's a 20 degree temperature differential. The real test is when it's zero degrees outside and we're trying to maintain a 65 right, degree differential. Crazy. But in all fairness, it's not even sealed up yet. We haven't done any weather stripping on the doors. Those need to be replaced. The garage doors aren't tight. Like nothing in this house is tight yet. It's officially warm and we're very close to being able to move in because yep. I went upstairs to get the shop vac 
and Bugaboo is sleeping up there. He's slept. I totally thought he left. Me too. But it's like the first time that he's really slept in the house before. Yeah. And he keeps coming back. I think maybe run the vacuum for a little bit. Yeah. And then I think shut it down. Yep. Thanks for getting me out of the dungeon to help today. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad. <laughs> it's nice, nice to have your help. We don't get to work together much lately, guys. Yeah. I'm sure they've noticed. Uh, so yeah, tomorrow off to the parts store to get some electrical boxes and then time to start putting this all together. And then once it's all wired in properly, there's, I don't think there's anything keeping us from putting the sheetrock on, which is the real game changer for putting the vanity, the toilet, yeah, the shower surround, all that stuff. Like a bathroom. Yep, it's gonna start looking and feeling like a bathroom.